and that grants, they, they get the biggest budget because they, you know, buy farms, they buy farming equipment, they do that. Uh, risk, hmm. Oh, uh, well, no, they really don't do the houses. The houses just come with the land. Rural Development Agency buys houses. Rural Development Agency typically deals with uh, communities who are under 4999 Anything under $5,000, that's who usually rural development deals with. Over that, the bigger cities is HUD, which is a part of the government, but it's not a part of the USDA. So rural development, and rural development will build, their logo is, I will build your community from the ground up. That's an agency you need to tap in. Rural development right now nationwide, they buy the fire trucks, they'll give, according to your population size, they give, like when they buy police cars for COVID because we're so small, they pay 90%. They do That's 50,000. No, no, you're talking two different things. You're talking to like those, uh, they do those little rural, the, the cooperative loans and stuff, that's 50. But see, that's why I say it's so important. With every meeting or whatever, I think you should commit 20 or 30 minutes to talk about USDA. Wow. So you'll know where you need to go when you go. Because they're not going to make it easy. I usually try to do my farmers or friends to NRCS first because they have the best reputation for getting with people or getting to them, they're usually where the rubber meets the road. By the time you get to Farm Service Agency, you will have a little self-confidence if you're new to the game, because yeah. Farm Service Agency is going to make you crack. <laughs> Point blank and simple is going to make you crack. But in the end, you're going to get that money. In the end, you're going to get that money. We're going to do questions and stuff later, because they're going to make, you know, I need it. But anyway, just to get you interested in USDA, and I started all that to say, let me tell you about SARE, because this is an agency of USDA, and where NRCS is a cost share program, Farm Service Agency loans money. Research Management Agency gives out grants for research and education, plus they're the crop insurance people, and they're the risk management people. And I do talk fast, so if I need to slow down, tell me. But SARE, and then you got the Environmental Protection Agency, which has mega bucks. I was just in Omaha, Nebraska, and they were saying that uh, one of the ladies from D.C., they've got $319 million to do about your little wind and air and all your little concerns. We don't know that. You know. But anyway, SARE is a USDA agency. Here, um, Louise, is there anyone here? I'll take some and pass it down. Mm -hmm. uh, SARE's only job in life is to give grants. SARE's only job in life is to give out grants. They're not NAS, like NASA's only job is to do the census of agriculture. SARE's only job, they don't worry about this, that, or the other, they just the grant agents. So if you do nothing else, if you just, you know, SARE is divided into uh, four different regions, and then they have a national chapter. And I have been co-chair of National SARE for six years. Um, but in saying all of that, the easiest thing, we're in the North Central region. I think it's 12 states. Um, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, whatever. Most regions, some do their own separate grants and some do similar grants. Our region has a farmer rancher grant, which is very important because just simple farmers, and they're not really stringent like uh, some of the bigger USDA grants and stuff. They, we have what you call in the North Central Region a um, farmer rancher grant. $7,000 for any little farmer. Five portions. It's not a big strict thing. Comes out, and I think that they're due in December, and they just reviewed them in March. And they, and they don't feel that $7,000 is a lot of money, but say if you want to experiment some kind of grass, or you want to see if, you know, peas eat better on clover or turn the greens as a cup of rice. Anything that you want to do, they'll give you a chance to do it. So why are you especially new apartments, or why are you just thinking of things or doing anything? Read up on SARE, and then they have the big research and education grants. 
But for farmers, the 7,000 for individual farmers, if you, you, and you get together and work as together collaboratively, you get 22,000, I think. So just something to um, for you to think about. Now they do the bigger grants, um, and I just like to say we love Harvey and Louise. They are awesome. Uh, my daughter back there, Louise, was on her side. <laughs> but we did a grant. I did a grant with Sayer, and see, they're not really rich because I'm co-chair of National Sayer. That's Washington. That's just the umbrella for Sayer. But I'm a farmer and a member of the North Central Region. So anything that the North Central Region, any proposals or calls they put out, I can do. I can apply for. Um, here, a few years back, they put out a call for a diversity grant for somebody who was breaking down barriers or whatever. They used to do it all the time. Wrote something up, got the grant out of 12 states, only 13 people applied. Wow. This was a $300,000 grant. And I'm saying this because I had some conversation with people. You know, I don't have any, I don't meet any strangers. But I'm saying there's so much that we can do. And I'm so proud of this gathering to see this many people that look like me together and doing something. You know, I was almost shattered last night. So, you know, you get more when it's numbers. And if you get creative, you can do everything. And it's not like... You know something and don't tell him, them, because, you know, it's enough for everybody. You can work together collectively. You can break in groups and work together and everybody do their own thing. And there is funding to make it fun. The reason our children don't get involved, because we don't show them that farming is a business. We don't show them that it's money. Everybody has these visions of your great-grandfather behind a new sweat, uh, granny getting food out the guy who ate healthy or whatever. So you forget that part, but they don't show that it makes money. So if you're bringing your youth alone, and they've got youth grants and say, the kids can get $400 for anything they want to do for a song. So I'm saying all of this for just get busy while you're learning and doing this. Still get busy. And look at some of these things and there's things that you can learn to do or experiment on your own. And then when you get in groups and get the education and stuff. Okay. I'm finished with that speech. <laughs> Enough about Sam.
They ain't gonna tell you. They ain't gonna act like I was the brain behind that operation. You might have been the brain, but you were the finances. Right. USDA is the finance, so you must learn to stop middleman. And when you all finish with this, I'm sure you can come up with something that will fit you. Thank you. Okay. All right, we go into real, uh, risk management. Where are these? Yeah, and Louise is one of the kids. We're going to go through this book. Who knows what risk management is? And it's not just in farming. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now we have 12 out of the 50 states. That newest one is a lady in North Carolina. 
She's the state conservationist. She's over the state and all the stuff that the gentleman that you guys heard about yesterday. So, um, Farm Service Agency is in every state office and every office in the counties. Now, risk management is a broader thing. They're divided in regions, and I think Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, possibly Ohio, we're all in the same region. But with risk management, your regional office is in Springfield, Illinois. There's a guy there named Brian. I can't, it used to be Mike Austin, um, but the guy there now is very committed. If you guys call that office, talk to him, he'll come out, he'll send you all kind of literature, he'll send people out to some of your events to really explain crop insurance, to explain stuff to you. So risk management is a key to your farming operations. And so um, we're going to just kind of talk out of this book because what I like about this one is it's so self-explanatory. You know, you know, a lot of times when people get in front of you and start talking and give you a spiel, you're almost deep and you're taking in so much, you're trying to write notes and you really get some two or three things might stick out, but when the session is over, there's no follow-up. You remember some of it, you might act on one, which is good, but then you're lost. This is broken down really, all the nuts and bolts, and then it will go. And let's look at the book, so that's why it was so important to me that most everyone, I thought, did everyone get a copy of we can get more. Uh, uh, we somebody can pass it out per farm. Okay, we good. Partners. Okay, that's that's perfect. So yeah, that's all you need is one per little group. And it says uh, introduction to risk management. On the front, it has they have their risk breaking that broken down into five basic risks, which will cover everything you do. And ever since I've been learning risk management, or they start talking about it, or whatever. This is the order they have them in. Okay, let's read them. Number one is what? Production. Two, marketing. Three, finance. Four, legal. Five, human. Now, with me and being a small farmer, and plus never having any brothers, like I said, I'm fourth generation on the land that I farm. I'm third generation on the operator. My children are. Uh, fourth generation. My grandchildren are six. Because my great grandfather was there, but he never owned a farm. My grandfather owned the farm. So with my great grandfather was six. And what's really important is the buying. I said I didn't do as good a job brainwashing with mine as I did with my grand but this is my grandfather did with me, but they got it, you know, they they all know they kind of stir away, but I got it. <laughs> you know, you know. But we started with my grandkids, we started as a business, even with my granddaughters, with my daughters. My grandfather and everybody in our family know the first job they had was on the farm. If you work with staff the Simmons, you got a paycheck. You have to teach them this business. So as I started doing risk management and thinking about it, to me, I know you need your production, you need your marketing, you need your financial, but I think, to me personally, I always put the human risk first because I saw so many visions and dreams and ideas just really fail because it was my passion. It was a joke. It was I wanted to do this. You wanted to go to school. I wanted to do this. We did not get together. First of all, I decided this is going to be family or if it's going to be my business and you all help me or what percentage of the time you wanted to give, or even what role you wanted to play. You know, I have a couple of sisters, can't even go back in the woods. And they, I have one that pray for us, you know. I, that daughter can do almost anything, drive tractors, whatever, share it, whatever I do. I've got one daughter that's a brainiac, but she ain't going to do nothing like that. So she, she's going to do our paperwork, she will write whatever you need to write. So to me, all, all of it is important, but I just ask you to consider that human factor. We don't consider death. We don't consider, you know, so in your operation, to me, you're going to need all of them, but I just I found later on, and I saw many people that undertook something, some ag project, 
And when they looked around and got disappointed to stop because the people who said, yeah, go for it, go for it, go for it, we gonna do this, we didn't do nothing. And then I'm standing there. And especially when you start participating in government programs and you think you got a team behind you, two of them users laid down. <laughs>
Because you got to realize we're all human. We've got to consider vacation time. We've just got a lot to consider. And we've got to consider that. I might be 40 and going full steam. Have a stroke, have a heart, whatever. You lose your mate, you lose one of your kids. That has to be, those are risks. And that's what risk management stands for. All risks, even legal. I own the farm up and down. What the kids going to do? If I've done my legal stuff where I've got something written down, we don't have these siblings fighting. We don't have, you know, one grandson saying I was the favorite, the granddaughter and I was first or whatever. All of these are risks. And the more you mitigate or deal with the risk that's possible, the better your operations will be. So then you get back to production. So it gives you like on the first page an overview of the risk. And the wordings is so, uh, here it says, the preferred optical, optimal choice must balance potential for profit and the risk of loss. That's on page one. I'm just going to go through because, because you get these books and because I want to hear stuff from you and you can have examples or you can even say what you think about it. You know, it's so easy on page two as they're identifying the risk. If you think in terms of production, all the risk that's involved in production, it says major sources of production risk are weather, climate change, pests, disease, technology, genetics, machinery, efficiency, and the quality of inputs. Now that's covering everything. Now how many of you